Thank you. So good evening, everyone. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Well, rightly said by Nikola Tesla. It is this science that allows every one of us to never stop questioning. Be it as simple as the invention of fire or be it queries related to black holes. Science is in a true sense a real infinity that is it has no ends. It is this particular thought on which AICHA and IT Rorkela has embarked upon and through its regular K-12 sessions tries to give insights on various STEM topics to the next generation of plethoric science enthusiasts like you all. Another day, another session, but the excitement level is all the same. Having said this, we welcome you all, bright students and teachers, to this wonderful initiative of ours, the K-12 Expo, a three-day long science heist for the sharp schooling minds. In today's session, our topic of study is Vedic Maths and Fun Science, and the intended class participation is from 3 to 5. Lots of things lined up for all you, but first let's welcome our guest teachers, uh, Ma'am <coughs> Khushbu Agarwal, Ma'am from Saraswati Vidya Mandir, Rorkela. Ma'am, we hope that you will attend the session as well and provide us with your valuable insights. Great to have you on board. For today's session, we have with us Anita, Shweta, Somyajit, and Ashirbad as our hosts. They will accompany you all on this insightful journey. So those who couldn't get my English, just make sure that the event is going to be really funny. <laughs> like it, it will be a real fun for you guys. Okay, so over to you guys. You guys can start. Thank you, Siddharth Bhaiya. Good, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you guys are not too tired with your upcoming exam pressure. And you guys are all okay in this COVID duration. So here we are to take you to a wonderful journey of cool stuff and fun facts related to science and some awesome mathematical tricks that will definitely help you in your exams. So get excited. So I am Swamijit Mitra and we have Ashiva Sawar from AICAC and anti Rockala student chapter are the pilots for today's flight. And later our captain Sheta Mohantidi would do the safe landing with some great interesting questions. So without wasting any more time, let's start. Over to you, Ashita. Hello, guys. <clears throat> Maths is usually a boring subject for most of us, but I like this subject when I was in school. What about you guys? Do you like this subject? Those who, like, those, those who like uh, mathematics, they can raise their hands. <laughs> Not on the video. Like, you have to... <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> That's okay. A lot of math enthusiasts are there. Yeah. Nice, nice, so nice. Some are not liking this subject, but I'm sure after today's session that you are going to start liking this subject because I'm going to take you into the world of basic math, the art of simplifying your complex calculations. Hope you enjoy this session. So let's let's begin. So. Here are the table of content and first and the first topic is LCM and SCF of fractions. The second topic is divisibility tricks. And the third topic is the <coughs> crisscross method of multiplication. And the fourth and last topic of basic math of our today's session is square roots of perfect square. So let's begin. Guys, uh, guys, guys, just a suggestion. Uh, go a bit slow because I see some of them writing down what you are telling. So that will help them a lot. So okay. please go a bit slow, okay? And uh, Ashirbad, if you have a earphone, that would be great. Actually, I have an earphone. Okay. Put it. Cool then, cool, cool. cool. Go ahead. So our first topic is LCM and HCF of fractions. So let's jump into it. So what is HCF? HCF is highest common factor. And LCM, 
capital is in its lowest common multiple. You must be aware of how to find HCF and LCM of two whole numbers. So now we are going to say you how you can find the HCF and LCM of two fractions. Let's say A by B and C by D. So to find the HCF of A by B and C by D, first we have to find the HCF of numerator. Which is A and C divided by the LCM of denominator, which is B and D. And for the LCM part, we have to find the LCM of numerator, which are A and C, and the HCF divided by HCF of denominator, which are B and D. So let's understand this with the help of an example. So the question is find the HCF and LCM of 4 by 9 and 6 by 21. So for this, we have to find the LCM of the numerators first. So the LCM of numerators are the LCM of 4 and 6, which is 12, divided by HCF of the denominator, which are 9 and 21, is 3. So 12 by 3 is 4. And for the HCF of 4 by 9 and 6 by 21, we have to first find the HCF numerator, which are 4 and 6, and the LCM of 4 and 6 is 2. And the LCM of numerator denominator of which are 9 and 21. And the LCM is 63. So the HCF of 4 by 9 and 6 by 21 is 2 by 63. So simple, right? So a question for you guys. Please answer in the chat box. Find the HCF and LCM of 5 and 4 by 6. Do you know the answer? After solving it, raise your hands, okay? This is so wonderful seeing them solving the questions. Yeah, I see six have already completed. So someone. Uh, no, they can't. Uh, the thing is, uh, you explain them. They will uh, match whether they are correct or not. So the. Yeah, yeah. Is... Wait for a section. One minute. A remaining will try now. Yeah, yeah. Let them wait try. for a minute. Yeah, those who have finished, you can raise your hands. I see 15, 14 guys have done. So I guess you could move on. Can move on. So let's move to the answers part. And the SPF of 5 and 4 by 3. So first we have to find the SPF of numerators, which are 5 and 4. It's 1. And the LCM of denominators, which are 1 and 3, is 3. So SPF is 1 by 3. And for the LCM part, we are, have to again find the LCM of numerator, which are 5 and 4, it's, and it's 20, divided by the HCF of denominator, which are 1 and 3, is 1. So we have the answer, 20 by 1 is 20. So next, let's move to the next topic, and it's divisibility checking tricks. <coughs> So let's begin. So 
to check if a number is divisible by 2 we have to check if the last digit is even which is if it should be that 0 2 4 6 or 8 for example in the number 1 2 and 4 4 is the last digit and we know that 4 is even so the whole number 1 2 and 4 is divisible by 2 and to check if a number is divisible by 3 so for the division three if you check if the sum of digits is divisible by 3 for example in the number 405 what is the sum of digits it's 4 plus 0 plus 5 9 and 9 is divisible by 3 3 into 3 is 9 so we have 405 it is divisible by 3 and in the second example 636 6 3 6 is 15 which is again divisible by 3 so the whole number is also divisible by 3 and for divisibility of 4 we have the last two digits of a number are divisible by 4 then the whole number is divisible by 4 so in the example 4032 32 are the last two digits And it's divisible by four, so four zero eight three two is also divisible by four. And for if a number is divisible by five, then the last digit should be the zero or five. It's very simple. For example, in number four ninety five, the last digit is five, so the whole number is divisible by five. And to check if a number is divisible by six, we have to check. that the number should be divisible by both 2 and 3 and we know how to find if number is divisible by both 2 and 3 for example in the number 1458 last digit 8 is even so it's divisible by 2 and the sum of digit 1 plus 4 plus 5 plus 8 it's 18 which is again divisible by 3 3 into 6 is 18 so the whole number is divisible by 3 and to check that divisible criteria of 8 you have to see the last three digits it should be divisible by 8 for example in 34152 152 is divisible by 8 no 19 into 8 is 152 so the whole number 34152 is divisible by 8 and to check if a number is divisible by 9 we have We have to first find the sum of digits. If the sum of digits is divisible by nine, the whole number is divisible by nine. It's same as the divisibility criteria of three. For example, in two double eight zero, two plus eight plus eight plus zero is eighteen. It's divisible by nine, so the whole number is divisible by nine. And the last one, to check if the number is divisible by ten, is the easiest. If you simply check, if the last digit is zero. If the last digit is zero, the number is divisible by ten. For example, in one thirty, the last digit is zero, so one thirty is divisible by ten. So let's move on <coughs> to the top third topic, which is crisscross multiplication. So let's see, and here is an example. 23 into 12. This is the traditional way of multiplication which teachers must have taught in schools. Okay, which is this is a general method. And if it it's a three-digit number, it must be linear. So if we solve this in the method of crisscross multiplication, we have our answer in just a single step. Okay, in just a single step. So let's see how it works. So here's the first step. First, you have to multiply the ones digit of both the numbers. Three into two is six. So very easy. And in the step two, you have to crisscross from which the name comes. Crisscross is the multiplication. And then add them. Let's see. Two into two is four, and three into one is three. Four plus three is seven. So we have seven and six. The answer till now. And the last step. So multiply the tenth digit of both the numbers. Two into one is two. The answer is two seventy six. We have the answer is two seventy six. So 
let's have a look at another example which is uh, 31 into 25 so the first step is first we have to multiply the first digit so 1 into 5 is 5 so the next step uh, you should give a try yourself and please raise the hands after you get the answer do not use calculator try out yourself Those who are able to solve, please raise your hands. You can see that a lot of hands are coming up. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, guys, move on. Yeah. So let's see what's the answer or solution of this question. And this is the second step. 21 is 2, and 5 into 3 is 15. 15 plus 2 is 17. We have 7 and 1 is carried over. And the third step 3 into 2 is 6. And then we add the 1 which was carried over. 6 plus 1 is 7. We have an answer 7 and 5. So you all guys are doing great. And now we have another section or subtopic of this topic. And it's multiplication of three digit numbers. So let's see how it works. <clears throat> and it's multiplication of three digit numbers. So this is the, these are the five steps. First, we have to multiply the ones digit as it was done. Then against the crisscross, tens and ones. Then against the hundred place, tens place and ones place, everything crisscross. Then again the hundreds and tens place. Then again the hundreds place. So it's not complicated. Let's move into an example. Uh, you will understand better. So let's have a look. So here it is. One to one into three zero two. First step is multiplication of one place. So two into one is two. And the second step. We have to multiply this cross tens and one split and then add them. 2 into 2 is 4 and 1 into 0 is 0, 4 plus 0 is 4. The third step, 100 tens and one split this cross. We have 1 into 2 is 2, 2 into 0 is 0, 3 into 1 is 3, so 2 plus 3 is 5. So the fourth step. Yeah. To multiply the hundreds and tens place. And we have one into zero is zero and three into two is six. Six plus zero is six. And we have the fifth step. We have to multiply the hundred place, which is one into three is three. So our final answer is three six five four two. So very easy. Now a question for you. Add this yourself. And let's see who comes first. Multiply 124 by 355. Raise your hand.
try it guys if you can't we are there to help you up Again, we can see a lot of hands raised. So we've got a quite a talented couple of children among us. Question is a bit of tough. If you guys get this right, give a little round of applause for yourself. So thirty-six hands raised. Yeah, you guys can go ahead. Yeah. So let's move in the answer part. Uh, so 124 in 355 is 44020. So hope you all guys have got the answers correct. And let's move into the next section. As square root of perfect square. So let's begin. So what is the square root? For that, you need to understand what a square. Squaring of a number can be defined as multiplying a number by itself. For example, the square of 4 is 4 into 4 is 16. And the square of 5 is 5 into 5 is 25. So the square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of 25 is 5. So here are the square of some numbers. So square of 1 is 1, 2 is 4, 3, 9, 4, 16, 5, 3, 5, 6, 36, 8, 6, 7, 49, 8, 6, 4, 9, 81, and 10 is 100. So let's move on. And here is it another table which would help you to find the answer fast. So if the last digit of the square is one, then the last digit of the square root should be either one or nine because square of one is one and square of nine is 81. And the uh, last digit of the square is one in both the cases, right? So we have the last digit of the square root as one or nine. The last digit of the square is four. We have the last digit of the square root as 2 or 8. So 2 square is 4 and 8 square is 64. And the last digit of the square is 4. In the same way, if the last digit of the square is 9, we have last digit of the square root as 3 or 7. 3 square 9 and 7 square 49. Both, in both the cases, the last digit are 9. So if a, the last digit of the square is 6, we have the last digit of the square root as 4 or 6. If the last digit of the square is 5, we have last digit of the square root as 5. 5 square is 25, so it's 5. And then if the last digit of the square is 0, then the last digit of the square root should also be 0. And it's a fact that a perfect square will never end with 3, 7, 2, R8. So let's have a look at an example and see how. So here's the question. Find the square root of double seven double four. It's a big number, but in just three steps we will get the answer. So the number is double seven double four, and it ends ends with four. 
So from the above table, we see that the square root must end with two or eight. So next step, and in the table we had also seen that eighty square is six four double zero, and ninety square is eight one double zero, and the number double seven double four lies between six four double zero and eight one double zero. So the square root must lie between eighty and ninety. So what are the two numbers which are between eighty and ninety, and which end with two or eight? So the numbers are eighty-two and eighty-eight. So now we have to decide whether it's eighty-two or eighty-eight. A double seven double four is closer to eight one double zero than six four double zero. So our answer is eighty-eight. But if it would have been closer to six four double zero, then our answer would have been eighty-two. So in this case, as it is closer to eight one double zero, the square of ninety. So the square root should be also closer to ninety, which is eighty eight. So our answer is eighty eight. So we have our. <coughs> so now our basic math session has then ended, and in the later section we will have a practice part, question part where. We will be asked questions now. Let's dive into the world of the. Uh, let's dive into the universe and learn some facts about different planets of our solar system. So I hand over to Somiji, and he will be continuing the session. Just a minute, guys. Thank Just you. a minute. Just a minute, guys. Uh, we have with us Kushbu Agarwal, ma'am. So Kushbu Agarwal, <coughs> ma'am. Uh, adding to her proficiency, she teaches English from classes three to seven in Saraswati Vidya Mandir, and uh, we are really proud of her for she being an educator. So we would like her to address our students as well, uh, a brief address. Uh, yeah, Anita, can you please give access to Miss Khushbu, Ms. Khushbu? It's written. Yeah, yeah, she's there. Yeah, Siddhartha. Yeah, I found her. Just a minute, I'm giving. Okay, Sita. Okay, okay. Yes, thank you, Siddharth. Hello, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining yes. in. Yes, yes. My voice is audible. Clear, clear and bold. Clear. Yeah, ma'am. Okay, first of all, thank you for inviting me in the session, and I acknowledge. Many tiny thoughts are here. They attended the session, and it's a very—I must say—it's a very fruitful session for the student. Even though, because in, at a very tender age, it's very important to know the Vedic maths and to know the related aspect of science. Because in this tender age, they can generate many new activities. They acknowledge, they understand many new things. so it is very important yes and very good me good evening to all the students and it's extremely very nice that you all attended attending the session and i know from the past 2 to 3 years the nit campus or the fresher students they are initiating this kind of activity for the school students a great applaud for the students of nit <clears throat> i just want that this things to be go ahead with the passage of time and i just wish to the nit students those who are conducting the session and i'm wishing to all the students right now present here they are attending the session so i just wish a great success to all and uh, at last thank you for the nit students for calling me here ma'am it was all our pleasure uh, to have you on board and thank you so much for your wonderful words i guess the students have taken some kind of inspiration from that <laughs> as well and they will applicate it in their lives okay uh, 
Yeah, thank you so thank much, ma'am, for being there. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, we'll be now proceeding with uh, the next part of our session. Yes. Samajit. Okay. Just uh, it's up to you. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Ma thank you, everyone. Thank you. Till now, thank you, Ashirbad. So, guys, uh, let's take a break from the number and enter the dimension of space. So, how many of you are interested to be an astronomer or unfold the mysteries of the space? Please raise your hands. We'd like to see. How many of you are very interested about space? And want to know about planets, different stars? Want to venture into the Mars? Yeah, the almost moon. all. Yeah, almost all. Almost all. That is a, such yeah. a fascinating subject. So now it's time to learn some awesome facts of our solar system. And at the end, I would tell you a secret method that would help you to learn the name of the planets like a pro. So let's begin with our first planet. Our first planet, which is Mercury. Mercury is the smallest planet and the closest to the sun. It is also called as the sweet planet because it takes the least amount of time to revolve around the sun, which is merely 88 days. So by the end of the March, our Mercury will complete another revolution around the sun from New Year. The most fascinating fact about this planet is that although it is very close to the sun, it is not the hottest planet. The temperature of Mercury is both hot and cold also. So moving on to the next planet, Venus. Venus is known as the most morning and the evening star. A day in Venus is longer than a year in Earth. It's very fascinating. We can sometimes see Venus with our naked eyes when we see into the morning sky or the very evening sky. And though it is a bit far from the sun, it is the hottest planet. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system. Now, the planet from which me and you are attending this session, our Earth. Earth is also known as the blue planet, as you all must know. It is the only planet with abundant supply of water. Earth is at the perfect distance from sun, which neither makes it too hot nor too cold, allowing a normal temperature for our existence. Though some people want to go to Mars, like me and you. Still, Earth has the greatest density Earth has the greatest density of all planets in our solar system. And a bit of sad truth, our beloved moon is distancing itself from Earth about one inch every year. And to leave our home and enter Mars. Mars is known as the red planet. As you can see, it is all red. Because this is because the presence of rusty iron in its ground. The name of the month March is derived from this planet Mars. Light from sun takes about 13 minutes to reach to Mars. So can you guys tell me how much time does it take the light to reach from sun to the earth? If you know, you may raise your hands. How much time does it take the light to reach from earth, from sun to the earth? A lot of hands again. A lot of hands. Okay, so let me tell you the correct answer. The answer is 8.3 minutes, or you may say eight minutes. A big round of applause for everyone who have got it correct. Next, leaping into the biggest planet, Jupiter. Jupiter is enormously big, hence it is called the gas giant. Its mass is almost twice of all the planets in our solar system. It is the fastest spinning planet in our solar system and has a total of more than 79 moons. That is a lot of number. Now, here comes the Lord of the Rings, our Saturn. Saturn is the king of the moon. It has a total of more than 82 moons, which is the highest. 82 moons, in unimaginable. It has the lowest density of all the planets, and it doesn't even have a solid surface. It is just enveloped by swirling gases and liquids. So, time to take your blankets, and because we are now going to Uranus. Uranus is the coldest planet ever. It has a record of the lowest temperature among every planet, which is minus 224 degrees Celsius. The most interesting fact about this planet is that it rotates in the opposite direction than the most of the planets. Some of you guys may know it. Every planet rotates from west to east, whereas Uranus and Venus, these two planets, rotate from east to west. Even the planets cannot cooperate. For our last planet, Neptune. 
Neptune is the farthest planet from the sun. The reason why it appears blue, you may see, the reason why it appears blue is because of a gas called methane. You will know it later on. A methane gas is present in the atmosphere of Neptune, which makes the atmosphere blue. A day on Neptune is only for 16 hours, which is even less than a day in Earth. So, this ends our journey in the solar system. Now you can surely show off your knowledge about solar system to your friends. But that's not it. Here's the secret. Let's imagine you are very hungry and starving for food. And for, you want something tasty right now. And your mom just served you the most delicious noodles, which is your favorite. That is my very educated mother just served us noodles. That was the sentence. Here you go. You just remembered every name of the planets. My stands for Mercury. Very stands for Venus. It is a for Earth, Mother, Mars, just Jupiter, Sub, Saturn, Earth, Uranus, and noodles will be Neptune. My very educated mother just subjects noodles. It's very simple, isn't it? Now you may be cool and you show it to your, all of your friends and be famous among them. So that was it. Enough gaining knowledge. Now it's time to prove some of it. So try some questions. Our next questionnaire, Shwetadi, would present to some questions. Over to you, Shatari. Uh, thank you, Samajit. Uh, and I hope all the kids have enjoyed a lot along with gaining ample amount of knowledge from the lectures that uh, Samajit and Ashirvad gave us. And I hope you would have learned all the things that they taught you today. And uh, just for a brief round of practice for you all, we have this questions lined up for you. So there will be a total of five questions and each of that will be having one correct answer only. So there will be four options in a question and suppose the correct option is B. You'll just have to type B in the chat box and that is it. OK. So the one who responds the fastest with the okay. correct answer get. Uh, okay, okay, sorry. They don't have a chat box. We have to read. Okay, so. Okay. And uh, so, Shweta, uh, one minute. Those who have raised hands, please uh, down your hands. All right. So you can raise your hands to answer the question, and we'll be checking if your answer is correct or not. Okay. So the way we were interacting uh, in the beginning of the session, that is the way you'll have to answer the questions as well. OK, so the one who uh, responds the fastest with the correct answer will get certificates as well. And we have five certificates, like uh, one certificate for each of the questions. So I wish you all the best and let's get started. So here is the first question. Let's see what it is. You'll have to find the HCF and LCM of 2 by 7 and 5 by 4. OK, so here are the options. Let me read out them for you. The first option says HCF is 5 by 28 and LCM is 10 by 14. Option B is HCF equal to 1 by 28 and LCM equal to 10. Option C. HCF equal to 7 by 11 and LCM equal to 2 by 14. And option D is HCF equal to 10 and LCM equal to 1 by 28. OK. So I expect you to uh, give me the correct answer and I'm waiting for your responses. Let's see if Ashirvad has been. Uh, has taught you. Uh, Properly like or not. What you thought. Yeah, no. <laughs> that is what we'll test. Okay. So we have like hands raised. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, first one is a girl from our first year, maybe his her brother has joined, I guess. China. Yeah, I can see. 21 hands raised and the first one is China Joss. You I'll unmute you. You can tell your answer. Yeah, China, you're good to go. Please. Can you be loud? They're not clear. Please. Am 
नंबर वन इज बी ओके लेट्स सी द आंसर स्लाइड दैट्स अ वॉइस वॉइस yeah i guess he has joined from That's my brother he's his... joined from my id yeah yeah okay. All right, so we have got a response. Are we waiting for any more responses, Anita, or shall we move on to the answer? I guess. I mean, we were going to unmute the first one, right? We have already unmuted, so we can go. All right. So moving on to the correct answer. Let's see what the correct answer is. Having a response that is B, and yeah, that is the correct answer. So congratulations, whoever answered. Uh, it correctly as well as was the first one to answer, and uh, those who could not answer, please do not lose hope as we have many other questions lined up next. So here is the second question, and let's see what it is. So there it is. You'll have to let me know um, that one twenty six is divisible by which of these, like. these are a set of numbers and uh, which fits in correct so the first option is 2 5 and 8 option b is 2 3 and 6 and option c is 2 5 7 and 9 and option d is 2 3 6 and 9 okay so again i, I can see yeah he test that ashirwad had taught you you will remember that very well and you all apply that as well and let's see your responses oh wow this time i can see like 40 hands are raised and the first one is ashutosh panda i'll admit you and give you the chance to speak ashutosh you can speak now what's your um, answer then i can't see the answer that's why i'm raising my hand oh I you can't, can't see, see the slide प्रतीक कुमार बेहरा यू कैन स्पीक आई गेस Okay, let's see. Okay, so Shweta, again, move on to the answer slide. Then let's see if that is the correct answer or not. And yes, it is the correct answer. That's awesome to hear correct answers again and again, like continuously. Let's see if we can get a hat trick of correct answers as well as the fastest ones. So moving on to the third question, and here it is. You'll have to find the square root of three, four, eight, one. Okay. And uh, if you find out by conventional methods, it will take a lot of time. So better use the trick that you have learned in the session itself. And these are the options. That is option A. It is forty-one. Option B, forty-nine. Option C, fifty-one. And option D, fifty-nine. Okay, I can see a lot of hands being raised, uh, and the first one is Shrest Kumar Sa. I'll unmute you, and you can tell your answer. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You are good to go. Ma'am. What is the number A? Option A. Yeah, we'll check. Shweta, can you move on to the answer slide? Shweta, I think there is a network issue. Let's wait for a minute. He will be joining.
Hello, Sweta, are you here? Yeah, move on to the answer slide, Shweta. Oh, sorry, guys, I was disconnected for a while, but I hope that doesn't break the um, interest and flaw. Uh, sorry, the uh, all your spirits and moving on to the fourth question. Sorry, moving on to the answer to the third question at first. Yeah, so the answer was option D. And congratulations, who have answered this correctly. Moving on to the fourth question. So let's see what it is. And yeah, the reddest appearance of this planet of the solar system is caused by the presence of rusty iron in its ground. Name the planet. Uh, option A, Venus. Option B, Jupiter. Option C, Mars. And option D, Saturn. Yeah, I can see a lot of hands being yeah. raised. And uh, the first one is Subha Malik. Uh, I'll unmute you. Yeah, Subha, you can tell your answer. Yes, ma'am, it is uh, uh, Jupiter. Okay. Second one. Um. Mitesh, you can unmute and speak out your answer. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, it's Mars. OK, let's see. We have got two answers still now. Let's see then what is the correct answer? I got one as B and the other one is C. So let's see. So it is C. OK. So the correct answer was Mars and it was a factual question that was uh, covered in the science part. OK, so moving on to the fifth question and guys, this is the last question. So I want all of you to uh, raise your hands and participate in. So let's see what is the fifth question. Name the planet that rotates in the west to east direction. So is it option A Uranus? or option B, Neptune, or option C, Saturn, or it is option D, that is both Neptune and Saturn. Uh, yeah, the response is increasing. I can see over 50 hands raised, and the first one to do so is Anchal Ja. I'm unmuting you and you can speak now. Anchal, you can tell your answer. And the answer is both B. Okay, your answer is D. We'll yeah. check it. Okay. All right, we'll see if Anchal has given us the correct answer or not. She says it is D. So let's check if it is the right option or not. And here it is the right option. Congratulations, Anchal. So the correct answer is option D. And moving on to the next thing. That is, we have approached to the end of the session. And uh, yeah, over to you, Siddharth. Yeah. <coughs> Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. So thanks a lot, Anita, Shweta, Somyajit, and Ashirvad uh, for this wonderful journey. It was really interesting. Uh, okay, uh, so I hope that all the students as well enjoyed the session. So here are some instructions like after the webinar is over, what you need to do. So please don't leave that WhatsApp group that you are part of. We will be organizing a quiz on 30th January in the evening for class three to five students and it will be a science quiz. OK, so those who do well in that quiz will get certificates as well. Uh, don't panic. The quiz is not at all related to your school subjects or your school marks. It is completely a fun event. Uh, 
we have already done the picture thing so do we do it again like yeah sure why not sure then uh, yeah like you can stop the screen share yeah all right so it's so overwhelming to have pictures with these cute kids so yes so guys kindly turn on your cameras everyone is expected to turn on their camera we'll be taking okay. a picture I see thumbs up from mahesh that is a good pose i smile uh shweta and anita you you guys also take some pictures All right, all right. It's satisfying as well. Yeah, I can see Ashutosh Panda's pose. Wow, many cool poses were spotted. Ah, uh, these guys are smart. True, true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the pictures are taken. <laughs> cool. So yeah, as I already said, guys, don't students don't leave that WhatsApp group. We will be doing a quiz on thirtieth, and for that we'll be sending the links there only. Uh, the picture thing is done. Uh, I will send the uh, recording of this particular meeting the link, and maybe we'll be uploading it in on on a YouTube channel. And once it's done, I'll send you the link. You guys can watch it on YouTube as well. Okay, uh, so thanks a lot, ma'am, uh, for joining us uh, with us today, uh, and uh, yeah, thank you all the students for participating today. I hope you guys learned something, and that will help you in your studies ahead and in your present classes. So all the best to you guys for your exams and all, and. Yeah, we will soon be coming up with another session and another topic. You guys can join us with again, uh, with us again. Yeah, it will be so interesting for us to have you once again, like again and again. Yeah, thank you. You guys can leave now. Okay. The session is over. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. We hope you enjoyed a lot. So did we. Yes. Bye guys.